Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is gonna be my Gotham Dollmaker Red Hood video. I would say this episode is about as comic booky as you could possibly get next to last week's episode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with an explainer for the characters that we saw in the episode, the Red Hood gang and the Dollmaker. Well, we kind of didn't see the Dollmaker, but I'll explain him too. The version that Gotham's doing of all these characters is an adaptation, so it's not right out of the comics, it's just like aspects of a bunch of different versions of these characters. It's the same deal as it is with like the reverse Flash on the Flash TV show. It's, it's not like straight out of the comics, it's blending elements from all eras of the comics. So just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, but starting with the Red Hood Gang. So the Red Hood Gang is, is kind of a weird story. The version that most people know about is the version that Alan Moore created in The Killing Joke. That, that's a famous Joker storyline. The Joker is a failed comedian who agrees to help out a gang, ends up wearing the Red Hood, and then ultimately becomes the Joker. So in that version of the story, the leader of the Red Hood gang becomes the Joker. Here's the twist though. Alan Moore was actually writing a revision of the Red Hood character that was created in 1951 in Detective Comics 168. That was the first time a Red Hood character appeared. So Alan Moore didn't originate the Red Hood character, but he did create the Red Hood gang as we know it today. Just to add to that, the original Red Hood character became the Red Hood, was inspired to put the Red Hood on because of the Wayne's murder. So Bruce Wayne's parents died, it inspires the Red Hood to become the Red Hood, and then everything gets kind of met after that. Anybody who's read the New 52 is totally not surprised with comics revising backstories. So during the New 52 comics, they revised the Joker's origin story and the doll maker became the person who created his modern face. He was already the Joker. He was inside Arkham Asylum and the doll maker came in and, and they kind of rebooted his character, so to speak, a rebirth of the Joker. That was Detective Comics Volume 2, Number 1. So we have doll maker in the episode. We have Red Hood Gang. There's a whole lot of meta crossover going on. Now the Dollmaker is a different story, so this is also a different version than we've seen in the comics. The version that Gotham is doing is called Francis Dullmacher. He's a European and he was mentioned in the Selena Kyle episode at the beginning of the season. He was the one that was rounding up children as part of that kidnapping ring and shipping them overseas. We've also seen a version of Dollmaker on Arrow. During season 2 they did the Barton Mathis Dollmaker, which is a little closer to the comics. So Gotham's version, the Francis Dullmacher character, has never appeared in the comics. But I expect them to incorporate a lot of Easter eggs. So hopefully that explains things a little bit. But it doesn't mean that that character at the end of the episode that put the Red Hood on is going to become the Joker. Because these are all origin stories, Gotham, as the TV show, could choose to take it in any direction they want. So presumably we'll find out in the next like three or four seasons or however many seasons it gets. Another week on Gotham, another Joker origin story. It wouldn't be Gotham if they weren't telling like a bunch of different versions of the Joker origin story. I think I mentioned it in last week's video, but there are like a ton of different versions of Joker origin stories. Like he has no one set origin story that DC has said, this is the official one. I try not to take the TV show too seriously, so I, I don't get really upset that they're trying to put this Jerome character out as the Joker character. He was actually listed on the IMDB for this episode, so I thought that he was going to be the one to take the Red Hood at the end of the episode. They might have changed that at the last minute, but IMDB is always wrong, so don't always go based on what you see on IMDB. That would have been totally crazy though if Gordon would have taken the hood back to the station and it would have ended up in Jerome's hands. That would have been more of a comic book moment. So here we go, getting into top five moments from the episode, starting with number five, witness the birth of the Red Hood. The really cool thing that I appreciated is that they just had the Red Hood pass through a lot of hands in the episode. First, it's, it starts off as an offhanded thing. Like someone's like, I'm going to wear a mask. It's going to be a symbol. I'm going to have some fun with it. Be a little bit of a Robin Hood. Then the next guy who takes it from him is like, oh, okay, sure, I'll, I'll play along with this. Each of them have very different motives. Then an even crazier person takes it at the end and, and it all goes to shit. Till finally we see a random kid off the street pick it up. Just a lot more Joker teasers, but, but it's a nice twist on the Batman mythos. Anybody who wears the cowl can be a symbol. So anybody that wears this red hood will also be a symbol. And obviously in a, in a very negative context. Some of the dialogue that they gave to some of these crazier characters did make it sound like they were trying to make them sound kind of like the Joker, just being really glib. But then bam, theory down, bam, theory down. They killed so many Joker theories in this episode, it was so funny. Moving on to number four, meet Alfred's old war comrade, Reggie Bain. You can always kind of tell when things are going dark, when Alfred gets really upset, and the character that they cast seems really rough around the edges. Clearly an alcoholic, living as a homeless person, looks like he was hired by the Wayne board just because they saw he was on hard times and had a connection to the Waynes, all to get rid of Bruce so that they can control Wayne Enterprises. Beyond some of the greater gears that were turning in the episode with this, this overarching plot, it was just fun to watch him punch it out with Bruce. I guess Alfred isn't a big fan of Krav Maga. 
It's really hard to say how dark they're going to take this David Mazuz Bruce Wayne character. In terms of different actors to play the Bruce Wayne character, Bruce Wayne Batman character, I, I'm sure it's fairly divisive. Everyone has their own opinion on who's the darkest. I still think that Michael Keaton's Batman is darker than Christian Bale's Batman. All things being equal, I think that he was just a little more cynical just because he was an older character than the Christian Bale Batman. It's like each time they reboot the series, they age Batman down just like a little bit until you get Kid Batman here. So Kid Batman, learning to draw some blood. Moving on to number three, The Adventures of Butch and Penguin. This was a really nice, completely unrelated storyline in the episode. Butch and Penguin trying to get more booze. It's really hard to tell what's going on with Butch just because of the way the actor's playing it. It's like you, you can't tell if he's pulling a fast one on the Penguin, like if, if his programming is going to revert, Zaz's programming. I don't expect any sudden twist in that storyline to happen until Fish Mooney re-emerges inside Gotham. And right now, she seems like she's tied up in this Dollmaker storyline. But everyone raise a glass to not being a sidekick anymore. I would say my funniest Butch moment in the episode was when he did like the, the Batman appear out of nowhere and scared the shit out of Penguin in the car. Moving on to number two, the Wayne board is trying to kill Bruce Wayne. This seems pretty straightforward. They want money and control. They want Arkham City. They, they want the control that that's going to bring over Gotham and the added wealth. So they're trying to get rid of Bruce so that he won't stop them. I don't necessarily think the show is going to do straight up Court of Owls, but I think that they're seeding that. I think this is an Easter egg for that. Super rich, clandestine organization that seemingly makes decisions by consensus. So if you haven't read the Court of Owls storyline from the comics, it's, it's one of the better ones. So totally check it out. It involves a really interesting twist on the, the Bruce Wayne origin story. The Bruce Wayne, not Batman origin story. But I don't think the show is going to go there. I, I don't expect Thomas Wayne or any of that stuff if you guys have read the comics. And my number one totally WTF moment, Fish Mooney jabs her own eye out. Who saw that coming? This is going to be crazy. I, I would say of all the, the body parts that you could lose on a TV show, an eye is the easiest just because they can put an eye patch on and they don't have to digitally remove it every week. And how cool is it that Jeffrey Combs is the doll maker's creepy office manager? It totally fits that the reanimator is part of the doll maker mythos on Gotham. If you've never seen Jeffrey Combs stuff before, he played Wei Yun on Deep Space Nine for a long time. Is this really creepy villain? He plays a lot of characters like that. Really creepy antagonist. So he fits perfectly with the tone of the show. I would say of all the running plots, the Fish Mooney one is, is the one that feels like it's most gone off the rails crazy. No idea where they're taking this, but I, I think they want to shock people and keep the character interesting. Here's my big question for you guys. Just thinking about this Fish Mooney WTF stuff, do you feel like it's a, just a twist of the show trying to keep her interesting, like an act of bad faith? Or are you really excited to see like where they're going to take this Dollmaker storyline? I mean, do you think it's really awesome? I'm kind of 50-50 on it right now. I'm not a big fan of the Fish Mooney character, but I, I do like them taking a big chance like this. It feels kind of like they're shooting fish in a barrel, so to speak. You know, quote unquote, haha, make as many jokes as you want. It's like on the list of WTF things you can do in an episode to make people freak out. It's, you know, one, you kill a character, two, you maim them in a big way, or three, you have like some big reveal that they're really secretly someone else. I'm just going to go ahead and completely ignore the Barber storyline, totally not digging where that's going. I feel like they could either turn that character into Harley Quinn. She could either go completely crazy. She's already halfway there. Or they could do like a like a Barbara Gordon Batgirl storyline. And that would actually make me a little upset. I, I feel like the character is too far away from being able to be that kind of hero. In order for a character to, to put a mask on, they have to go through a crucible. And that usually takes multiple seasons. So I don't think that she's going to become like a Batgirl type character, a vigilante type character. I think it's more likely that she would go completely nuts. At least, I think that would be more fun to watch. Doesn't it just look, though, ba based on that wardrobe that she pulled out, that she shops at the same store as Tim Burton did for all his Batman films? I really do like the way that they, they blend visual elements from all the Batman films. Speaking of which, there was actually a nice Easter egg for the classic Batman movie, the 1966 movie. Whenever Bruce pulls the wine out, and Alfred's like, a burgundy, 1966, one of your father's favorites. 1966 was just the year that the classic Batman movie came out. If you guys saw any other Easter eggs that I, that I haven't mentioned yet, just write them below in the comments. But like I said, big ones, Dollmaker, Joker origin story, Red Hood gang. Those are those are the real big ones. Kind of Court of Owls. Court of Owls, maybe, maybe Easter egg. So here's what's going on with the rest of the DC Comics TV shows for the rest of the week. So Arrow's going to Nanda Parbat. It's going to be a big Ra's al Ghul storyline. Be sure to subscribe to get that video. That's going to be on a Wednesday. There's no new episode of The Flash tonight, so I'm just going to do a bonus video for that. What's going to happen after this week, though, is that The Flash and Arrow will both be on break till March 17th and 18th. You know, the Tuesday and Wednesday, that same week. 
So while those shows are on break, I'll just be doing bonus videos for them. Gotham is just going to keep going, though. There'll be another new episode next week. I believe Gotham has 22 episodes total, so that's five more new episodes. Arrow and The Flash both have 23 episodes in the season, so there'll be plenty more new episodes spilling over into Game of Thrones territory. There'll be a lot of awesome stuff going on at the same time in a couple weeks. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really excited. So while you guys wait for Nanda Parbat on Arrow and my, my Flash bonus video, you can click here for last week's Gotham video, a little more of a straight up Joker storyline, and you can click here to get ready for Arrow. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five. I'll see you guys tonight.